Greetings fellow nerds. I know it's been over a month since my last video, so what have I been doing during that time? Unfortunately, for most of it, I have to say nothing. I just need a break after working on nothing but sodium for almost a year, accumulating 101 days of video totaling over 20 terabytes. So my apologies, I'm very sorry. Not much new stuff happening. That being said, I started to get back in the game. First, I touched on the sodium work again by trying to make it using aluminum rather than magnesium. Aluminum is much easier to get than magnesium. Thermodynamically it should work, but when I tried it nothing happened. Even our advanced catalysts like boreal and tetrahydrolene oil didn't work. Perhaps the aluminum oxide is too good at blocking further reactivity. Oh well, it was worth a shot. Second, I tried to revisit making sodium with sodium carbonate rather than sodium hydroxide. Without hydrogen, it might be a more efficient way to make sodium as you would only need half the magnesium. I tried this once before, very early in our project, but that was using our older catalysts. Perhaps our newer, more advanced catalysts like menthol or borneol would work. Unfortunately, they did not and I got no sodium production. Another thing I've been doing is to try and make lithium metal similar to how I make sodium metal. So I documented the flask appearance as I wanted to test how corrosive lithium hydroxide was and proceeded to dry my lithium hydroxide by directly heating it on the hot plate. Interestingly enough, it easily dries just by heating, unlike sodium and potassium hydroxides. And it doesn't damage the glassware either while doing so. I then proceeded to add magnesium, mineral oil, and a borneol catalyst and heat up the reaction to try and make lithium. Unfortunately, there was no hydrogen formation at the usual operating temperature of 200 Celsius. So we increased the temperature further to 250 Celsius, which is the maximum I can reach in my hot plate. Now normally I wouldn't do this since the flask usually gets destroyed by sodium hydroxide at that temperature, but lithium hydroxide seems to be much less corrosive. Anyway, it worked, hydrogen started to bubble out. Unfortunately, this reaction is extremely slow. The bubbles only come once every 30 seconds, which is almost negligible. Even after 7 days of heating, I still wasn't able to see any appreciable lithium formation. At first I thought it might be because my borneol was boiling out and solidifying in the upper parts of the apparatus at these temperatures. So I repeated the experiment again, this time using tetrahydrolene oil which is liquid and will just drip back down. Unfortunately this didn't work either and the reaction was still extremely slow. Even after a week of heating I was unable to obtain any lithium and the reaction mixture only barely reacted with water. So while it does look like it's possible to make lithium, it's totally impractical due to time constraints. Nonetheless, this experimental failure isn't a total waste. After cleaning the flask, it was shown to not have been damaged by the lithium hydroxide at high temperature. This would be a useful piece of knowledge if in the future we tried to make lithium by other means like electrolysis. I'll keep thinking on this. Now another interesting trend we can see from our lithium work is that it seems to show that as we go down the periodic table towards metals with lower and lower reduction potentials, the rate seems to go faster. Lithium seems to be impossibly slow, sodium seems to be finished in 10-40 to 40 hours depending on the catalyst, and potassium proceeds relatively quickly at just 4-8 to eight hours. Perhaps if I attempt rubidium or cesium we'll be done in even less time. But first we'll have to get some rubidium or cesium hydroxide which is difficult for the amateur. Now an important benefit about lithium formation being impossibly slow is this would make our lithium contamination in our sodium production experiments negligible. In the original experiments, a small amount of lithium metal could be used to jumpstart sodium production by reacting with excess water and drying out the sodium hydroxide. The lithium also converts into sodium by male displacement. Then as temperature is brought up to operating temperature, the sodium production is taken over by the magnesium. It was thought at the time that when the sodium hydroxide ran out, the lithium would be reformed by the magnesium. But now that we know that lithium formation is impossibly slow and doesn't even happen at 200 Celsius, there should be negligible lithium contamination. So we can be confident that our sodium produced is relatively pure. I think I'll abandon lithium metal until further notice and attempt the metal production experiments on potassium. Hopefully our new understanding along with our advanced catalyst will work much better. 
Anyway, in a completely separate line of experiments, I've been going back to doing some very simple chemistry, like dissolving silver in nitric acid. I think after several months of doing novel scientific research, it would be a welcome change of pace to do fun chemistry again. So that's my brief update for this month. Once again, apologies for my vacation. I'll be back to real chemistry soon.